Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll, and like and subscribe to embrace the power of the dark side. Maybe. Today we're building the deadbeat dad of the Star Wars universe, Darth Vader. Now to be clear, this is a build for Vader, not Anakin, as they fight very differently. If you want a quick Anakin build, though, go Ranger, pick Sand as your favorite enemy. It's coarse, it's rough, and it gets everywhere. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First and most obvious, we need a laser sword. I believe they call it a glowy swatter in the movies. Next, we'll get so intimidating that every step you take demands a John Williams score. Finally, we'll find a way to choke our co-workers who discriminate against us due to our religious beliefs. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. Multiclassing shouldn't be an issue with this guy. Charisma is number one. Vader is the most iconic film villain of all time because of James Earl Jones. Strength next. The Death Star has a killer gym right next to the shield generators. Wisdom after that, seeing through the lies of the Jedi requires high perception and insight. Intelligence will follow, you're a spectacular pilot, and spaceships are mechanically complicated. Constitution's a bit lower, the respirator is working overtime, and will dump dexterity, which is funny because it would probably be Anakin's top stat before Mustafar. Guess as he got older, he realized slow and steady is best. And he got his legs cut off. Speaking of, Obi-Wan says you're more machine than man now, but I did the math and you're like 43% machine tops. So while the Warforged was considered, I'm considering that robot body a variant of a human. For your variation, Magic Initiate lets you grab two cantrips and a spell from a list of your choice. I'd go for Sorcerer and take Mage Hand to move objects weighing five pounds or less with a floating spectral hand, and Message lets you use the Force to communicate with someone within 120 feet of you and they can respond as well. For the first level spell, Thunder Wave is a nice force push equivalency, forcing a constitution save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet, but it doesn't push them and they only take half damage if they succeed. Bump charisma and strength with your two free points, take history as your skill of choice to remember the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise, and the soldier background for athletics and intimidation proficiency to have those rebels shaking in their boots as you step onto the sea. We'll kick things off as a paladin, first level paladins can take two skills from their list, go for insight and religion. You also get Divine Sense, letting you detect Celestials, Fiends, or Undead within 60 feet of you, an amount of times equal to your Charisma modifier per long rest. To think, if you had this when you were younger, you would have known Padme wasn't an angel. You also get Lay on Hands, giving you a pool of healing equal to 5 times your Paladin level you can distribute as an action. Not sure that that's in character, but you can use it on yourself to repair a short circuit. Second level Paladins get a fighting style. I'd recommend dueling. It gives you plus 2 to damage with a weapon you're holding one-handed, as long as you're not holding any in your other hand. I'd recommend a long sword. It's a versatile weapon. That means you can wield it one-handed to deal 1d8 damage or two-handed for 1d10. With Duelist, it's actually more consistent to go one-handed, leaving your other hand open for some spells. Spells like Divine Favor, which adds 1d4 radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute depending on your concentration. It's a light on a saber. What more could you want? How about issuing some orders with the command spell? This forces a wisdom save on a creature. If they fail, you can give them a one-word command that's not directly harmful to them, like flee, kneel, drop. It's like training a dog. If spells don't feel like your thing, Divine Smite adds 2d8 radiant damage to a melee weapon attack with an extra d8 against fiends or undead in case there are ever any zombie younglings that want revenge. You use a spell slot for this and can add d8s with higher level slots later for when you really need to carve through someone. Third level paladins can choose a sacred oath and oath of conquest paladins just want to conquer the galaxy as father and son. That's flagrant nepotism. Who is working HR for the Empire? You can channel divinity once per day in one of two ways. Conquering presence lets you force a wisdom saving throw on creatures within 30 feet of you, frightening them if they fail for a minute or until they make the save. Guided strike lets you add 10 to an attack roll, considering even at this level your attack modifier is plus four, this really should be an automatic hit. You also get divine health, making you immune to disease. That respirator obviously has some filtration stuff, keeping out colds, which is good because an enclosed space like a star destroyer everybody's gonna be catching everybody's cold it's just a mess fourth level paladins can grab a feat menacing comes from the feats for skills unearthed arcana gives you plus one charisma doubles your proficiency bonus to intimidation checks and lets you force a contest of your intimidation and an enemy's insight to frighten them for a minute if they succeed you can't use this on them again 
again until you take a long rest. This is also a specialized attack action, so when you get extra attack, you can use this as one of those attacks. This is super good. It's basically conquering presence with way more uses and no AoE. It also has expertise on the intimidation check instead of your regular spell save. Fifth level paladins get an extra attack. Sorry, I know I spoiled that for you. Darth Vader is Luke's dad. Whoops, did it again. This lets you attack twice instead of once with your action for faster saber swings. You can also learn second level spells, and hold person lets you paralyze a target that fails a wisdom save for up to a minute depending on your concentration. This is your forced choke, though unfortunately there's no suffocation damage, but keep in mind you automatically crit when you have a paralyzed target. And Divine Smite crits are nuts, doubling all the damage die for 68 total damage before your modifier, with more damage from an extra attack for more damage with a higher level smite. Hopefully that makes up for the lack of asphyxiation. Sixth level paladins get Aura of Protection, giving allies within 10 feet a bonus to their saving throws equal to your charisma modifier. It's easier for stormtroopers to be confident when they're standing next to the biggest badass in the galaxy. Seventh level conquest paladins get Aura of Conquest, reducing the movement speed of any creature frightened of you to zero and dealing psychic damage equal to half your paladin level whenever it ends its turn. This only works in a 10 foot radius from your person, but that's still pretty far. Pairing this with menacing makes you so scary it hurts people. Eighth level paladins get an ability score improvement or a feat, round up your charisma and strength here for better damage and a stronger connection to the dark side. Ninth level paladins learn third level spells. From the conquest list, fear forces a wisdom save on creatures in a 30 foot cone extending from your person, frightening those that fail for a minute. Honestly, you don't really need this with the conquering presence and the menacing, but if you really need that AoE and don't have any divinities left, this is a nice backup. 10th level paladins get Aura of Courage, making allies within 10 feet of you immune to fear. I'm guessing this just means that they're more afraid of you than anyone else in the galaxy. 11th level paladins get Improved Divine Smite, adding a permanent D8 radiant damage to your melee attacks, making Divine Favor kind of irrelevant, so you can save your concentration for some more force chokes. 12th level paladins get another ability score improvement or feat. Let's increase our lightsaber skills with the defensive duelist feat. This lets you add your proficiency bonus to your AC when you're holding a one-handed weapon and not holding a shield. 90% of every lightsaber fight is just blocking. 13th level paladins can learn 4th level spells. Death Ward prevents a target from dropping below 1 HP the first time they would before they take a long rest. This is useful in case some dude in a vest blows your ship up in the Death Star trenches. 14th level paladins get Cleansing Touch, letting you remove the effects of a spell affecting you or another creature an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. Use this if someone's trying to Jedi mind trick you, which honestly doesn't mind control sound way more dark side than a little lightning? Food for thought. 15th level conquest paladins get Scornful Rebuke, meaning that anyone who deals damage to you takes psychic damage equal to your charisma modifier. I'd probably regret hitting Vader too. 16th level paladins get another ability score improvement, cap that charisma for maximum fear. 17th level paladins can learn 5th level spells from the conquest list, dominate person lets you fully control a creature that fails a wisdom save for up to a minute depending on your concentration. Like I said, Jedi mind trick seems way more sithy to me, so sith mind trick someone and bend their will to the dark side. 18th level paladins extend their auras to 30 feet, so that's 30 feet of buffed stormtroopers and terrified rebels, what a treat. 19th level paladins get our last ability score improvement, bump that strength, can't cap it, but honestly 18 is respectable for a middle-aged guy with permanent sleep apnea mask on his face. Our capstone is the 20th level of conquest paladin for invincible conqueror, letting you go full on sith lord for one minute once per long rest, resisting all damage, critting on a 19 or a 20, and getting a third extra attack. Did the rebels get those death star plans? Is your boss lightning blasting your son? Invincible conqueror time. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, if fear a path to the dark side is, then you are a hiking instructor. You're so scary people can't move, then they take mental damage while looking at you. You're also a great leader, maybe not a nice one, but your soldiers will be performing at their best while they're close to you. Finally, hold person on a paladin is terrifying. You auto crit with 3 attacks per round, each of which do a minimum of 2d8 for 6d8 with a potential to add 10d8 from a 4th level smite. For weaknesses, you're too slow to avoid any deck saves, and a negative 1 deck save at level 20 is an invitation for fireballs, lightning bolts, and more. You also have limited range options. With low mobility and no real range spells, flying enemy or archer who can outrun you could be problematic. Finally, you're fairly dependent on frightening things, and there are late game enemies with immunity to that condition, so all that investment, not really helping. So it's a good thing you invested in the stormtroopers. Take everyone out on the ground and delegate the ranged duties to another party member. Your stormtroopers are clones of Django Fett. Obviously they're gonna be great shots, right?
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. And if you like the Sith, vote in the poll for our next Sith, Count Dooku, Sheev Palpatine, or Kylo Ren. And come back on Thursday to play Frank and Charlie's favorite game.